better crops and waterless farming, clover plains filled with endless luck, a fantastic coral lake inhabited by unique slime. So how's it going guys? I'm Swan and welcome to my video. Recently, we collected three amazing update ideas from the comments. We've turned these ideas into reality. Now, let's take a look at this coral lake update ideas from this subscriber. As indicated by the information, coral lakes have a rare chance of generating within the land and are surrounded by mountains. You can find a variety of tropical marine life in the lake, such as corals and tropical fish. Oh, look at these new slams there. Let's go check it out. Warm ocean slams have a small chance of spawning at any time, but they become more active during a full moon. Unlike regular slams, they drop blue slam balls and tropical fish when killed. The blue slam balls have the same recipe as the green ones, but the blue slam blocks can be used as a unique decoration. You can even use a bucket on medium or large warm ocean slams to get a tropical fish bucket and they will liquefy fly into water. Oh look, we've discovered some adorable bubbles. They are the bubbles of tidal water, and we can use empty bottles to collect some bubbling water. After drinking this water, we'll gain a 3 second water breathing effect. We can also use tidal water on coral to keep the coral alive, preventing it from dying. Now, coral can be used as a decoration on land. Awesome! Wow! According to the information, the big rock should be the ocean amethyst geo. Similar to the amethyst one, we can find plenty of ice blue amethyst inside. We can break these ocean amethysts and obtain some shards. These shards have similar recipe as the amethyst ones. Additionally, we can use them to upgrade the conduit and also craft ocean torches. These ocean torches can be placed underwater, making them excellent underwater illuminators. Oh, by the way, you can find a chest at the center of the lake and get her out of the sea, which seems to be an engine core for the coral lake. Hmm, the next subscriber mentioned something about Emerald Land, which got me so excited and I come up with a lucky clover plains filled with sparkling emeralds. Now, let's go check it out. Wow, this place looks like it's straight out of a fairy tale. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's grab some scissors and collect some clovers. Based on the information, we have a small chance of fighting four to five four leaf clovers in this area. These four leaf clovers can bring a stroke of luck to nearby players within a small radius. You can also choose to combine them with gold ingots and emeralds to make an emerald necklace. Once worn, the player will continuously experience experience the effects of good fortune. Now let's explore some caves, just like the gold mines in the badlands. The emerald mines here will generate in abundance. We can go mine some emeralds and craft some fancy tools. These emerald tools have a built-in lucky effect. Similar to fortune, the emerald pickaxe will double the yield of my doors. Similar to loading, the emerald sword will double the jobs from mobs. However, the quality of these emerald tools is higher than gold tools but lower than iron tools. That means you won't be able to use an emerald pickaxe to mine diamonds. You can still obtain an upgraded version by smithing. This upgraded pickaxe will allow you to mine a large number of diamonds when ensuring durability. And by the way, on the clover plane, players will receive a hidden lucky effect. This means that whether fishing or obtaining jobs from mobs, there will always be a certain increase in luck. Now let's take a break. Hey, would you like to share your update ideas and turn them into reality? Don't hesitate. If you have great ideas, feel free to DM me or leave a comment. But before diving into more great experiences, with Swan, please hit that subscribe button. I would be excited to embark on more stories and adventure with you. Now, let's make our way to the Badlands and explore the improved farmland that this subscriber suggested. Oh, it seems like there is a new type of soil in this place. According to the information, this red soil can be directly used for cultivating melon crops without a need for any water source. Additionally, melons grown in this red soil will have a 70% growth boost. Now, we can use some mats and dirt to craft black soil. With this black soil farmland, we can cultivate any crops without a need for a water source. In addition to the increased growth speed, these black farmlands are resistant to trampling. Now we can use a hoe on coarse dirt. Coarse dirt farmland can only be used to cultivate wheat seeds and potatoes, and you will need a water bottle to moisten it. Meanwhile, wheat seeds will be magically transformed into rice, and potatoes will only yield poisonous ones. We can use ripe plants in a bowl to crop a bowl of raw rice. Wait, when cooked, can restore four hunger points. You can also combine cooked rice with dry kelp to make an onigiri, which restores five hunger points. Here, I have some additional ideas to share with you guys. Now, cultivating other crops on cursed dirt farmland will only yield that bush. We can also use gold nuggets on regular farmland to grow golden carrot. After that, you won't be able to use bone meal on them. Phew, it looks like we have just enough time. 
Before we wrap up this adventure, I want to give another shout out and thank you to all these inspiring friends. So, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have more great ideas, please leave a comment and let me know. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!